for the whole um, time that we've been here. Um, please feel free to kind of jump in. Do you have anything that you'd like to ask, you'd like to talk about? Um, how can I get you um, involved in this conversation a little bit? Uh, what would you like to... How, oh, there's a microphone. Hey, Keegan, feel the microphone. They do. I know. See, it's all fancy. Yeah. Ooh, there. Okay. Is it on? I think it is. It's on? Okay. Um, I just wanted to comment on Keith, your a comment about post uh, how brain historically, you know, get, where is that work? And I think part of the problem is that this quote unquote postmodern dance is such a, a huge area, like it incorporates the work that um, Jez showed, the group A work, this like repetitious sort of like, <clears throat> I don't want to, unemotional, I guess. And then also the contact improvisation. I just feel like it's totally disjointed. Like those two areas aren't really coming together for me as a viewer, like um, contact improv and postmodernism that's collapsed, collapsed with um, minimalism is, sort of, for me, there's no connection there. And so I feel like Anna Halpern is also coming from this other place and nobody really knows what she's doing now. I feel like pe people in my generation don't really know what she's doing. She's mm -hmm. just sort of, I don't know, she's like disappeared or something for us. Like I feel like her work isn't out there. We don't know what, what and she has a legacy, but it's, it's confused, and it, it would be great if there was some kind of clarity about that, if you want to comment on it. <laughs> I don't know. I, the first part is that regardless of the, you know, I mean, I think in, in books what they talk about is the, oh shit someone's got a really specific way of distinguishing these two aspects that you talk about. One being more formal and, um, and being connected, like you said, to minimalism, and the other being more about sensation and process and um, nature, the organic, the free body, that different direction. But if I just say that there's a number of experiments that Anna Halpern kicked in that were picked up by many people in New York and the Bay Area, um, we know, you know, if you've watched TV or if you hang around young people, you know that there's a, it's always a trend to be like 20 years behind. And so the late 70s and the early 80s are very in sort of aesthetically. In Europe, there are a lot of people, both academically and in the performing arena, like major funded artists that would be playing at the Zeller Box and the Yerba Buenas, who are doing very process-based work, who are asking what is dance, who are, um, looking to the work of the 70s and going, how was this made and how could we make work today in this process? I'm pretty sure I'm safe to say that there's no one in the Bay Area uh, working above a $5,000 budget. Maybe I'll just say 10, you know what I mean? In terms of like, who's actually prepared to just drag a body across the stage, say back and forth for two hours, and then ask for $50,000 to do it, you know, because of the research. So. <laughs> and I don't, and I, and I don't want to brag that that's a good thing or a bad thing, but just to sort of say, there's a there's a break somehow in the actual history of the Bay Area with what you would see, um, if you go to say, if you went from Robert Moses to Janice Garrett, to Leah to Will to like I'm just trying to get people from a, a number of different locations. If you went from one to the next, you would think, this is modern dance. It's sped up. There's a few other things going on, but basically everyone's trying to look pretty, they're trying to look good, they're trying to have long, clean lines, and they turn out like this, and they're parallel like this, and that's what they're doing. And basically, the dance movement that I came into was a revolution against that. So I can see that we all synthesize ourselves with this mainstream, and we influence it in that. But for me to keep seeing that, and to see that sometimes as the dominant voice that's going on, is really, that's where the confusion is. Um, <laughs> I know this, but I feel like I just heard um, Anna Halpern's name come up recently with Yui, who was on the, the video Plaza. Um, do you Yui know if she? Yui and Sherwood have both worked 
Yeah. I think they're doing it like right now, like a Seacrest Ranch. Is that the name of the? Seacliff. Seacliff. Oh no. Sea Ranch. Sea Ranch. The Sea Ranch Collective. Yeah. I have lots of little notes, nothing really <laughs> is connecting, but um, there is something about what Keith is saying, this mm, thing about like the postmodern lineage, dragging the body on the floor and then the dancing, dance kind of lineage that I'm actually in dealing with in my university at UC Berkeley, sort of the Graham school of teaching, disciplining bodies in specific kinds of ways, really strictly. And then coming from my training, which sort of just took, every, took that and sort of turned it around and said, let's just go against everything. Let's go against, go against. In some ways, I'm questioning why is all the going against, you know, there is something really beautiful about disciplining the body in specific ways. So I guess that's a totally other conversation, but there's something um, also that happened in, in how this whole postmodern notion that you know this this universal thing came up a few times that somehow that a body could just come onto a stage and represent. I guess that maybe comes from Cunningham or something. You could just come on and be a point in space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm just a body. I'm just. Mm -hmm. I'm not a body connected to my heritage, to my who I am when I step a white woman with red hair and all the things that come with my life and my everything. And that somehow my the postmodern kind of world negates that for, or tried to neutralize that out. And I think that's sort of where there's some conflict. And I think some of the, like something that Graham did or even Horton or some of these old, you know, modern dancers in some ways to claim this intense body that was moving in a specific, really idiosyncratic way that really claim something like I'm going to do this contraction and then of course it got watered down and lay as it went or something and anyway so there's something about having time to I guess explore and recognize and claim our ways of moving our own subjectivities and then be able to talk about those as well as move them and things like that and then pass those on and share them and then I'll stop talking in a second but just um, I wonder about you know the spaces why we hold on to this the theater so desperately? Is it some kind of church or something that our religion that we need to come here and be seen? And, and you know, when did, now that we have TVs and internet and these other screens and these other viewings, why, you know, I love this, so I'm not being critical of it in the way of saying I don't want it to be here, but critical of it in the way of, like to question it. And, um, yeah, the spaces and, and, and why do we need to be viewed, have to have it be legitimized? Why, when did dance stop becoming participatory? And I think that relates to sort of the ethnic, or the, somehow if you put it on the stage, it becomes concert dance, then you start getting confusing things going on there, but anyway. Yeah, I just want to mention, I think that you're, pointing at something that I think is interesting about the Bay Area where you have this strong kind of postmodern <coughs> uh, historical trend, um, Anna Halpin and other things, kind of contact improv, and at the same time you have this really strong kind of autobiographical, political dance theater bent, and in a way, it, this is again the same fight of these two things, kind of how do they go together, but it seems to me that that's one of the hallmarks of the Bay Area is work that's um, working in between those two things. Um, it's kind of specific to here. I don't want to push too much a single track of history. Um, and I'll just say that I think that the question of how to train bodies today uh, for some idea of contemporary dance where they could be in a variety of different works and speak different languages and come from community-based locations and still be able to collaborate with others, I think that's a great question right now. And I think a lot of the world's engaged in it. And so that's why it's exciting to see schools changing. Um, my work, for those who are familiar, is I definitely play between the virtuosic and the non-virtuosic body. I'm, I'm not trying to do an, one out in a project. Um, the other piece for me is that there, 
there's no, the lineages of dance cannot be seen separate from these lineages of 